Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland says both she and U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer are calling their meeting in Washington yesterday constructive as Canada rejoins NAFTA renegotiation talks this week. Has really paved the way for what Canada believes will be a good week is the fact that Mexico has made some significant concessions particularly in the area of labor and of rules of origin on cars. For our government, good jobs for working people in Canada has always been our priority. And these concessions really are going to be valuable for workers in Canada and in the United States who have been concerned for some time about their jobs going to lower wage jurisdictions. It was a constructive conversation uh, and Ambassador Lighthizer uh, agreed uh, that if I were asked, uh, he was fine with me saying that he feels it was a constructive conversation as well. Uh, we are set, we believe, for an important and constructive week. We agreed we would go into detail on specific issues beginning tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, Donald Trump's administration is giving Canada until Friday to sign on to a bilateral trade deal between the U.S. and Mexico or be treated as a real outsider against whom punishing tariffs on autos will be imposed. But trade experts are dismissing the take-it-or-leave-it threat as political theater aimed at pressuring Canada to acquiesce, with some even questioning whether the president has the legal authority to pursue a deal that doesn't include Canada. And even if he does, some doubt Congress would accept an agreement that excludes the United States' largest trading partner. At issue is the Trade Promotion Authority Congress has granted Trump to fast-track renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement. That authority was for a trilateral deal involving all three NAFTA partners, not a bilateral pact between just two of them. On August 26, the Batchewana Police Service and the Sioux OPP responded to a report of an intoxicated male on Batchewana First Nations territory. 22-year-old Matthew LaRue from the Sioux was charged with possession of an opioid, possession for the purpose of trafficking and obstructing police. The accused is scheduled to appear at the Ontario Court of Justice on September 24th. Following the lead of other Northern Ontario communities, the Huron Shores Fire Department advises that the fire ban imposed back on July 6th has been lifted. Open air burning may only be conducted though with a valid permit. Those permits are available at the municipal office in Ironbridge from Monday to Friday. They're only $5. With the nation's multi-billion dollar marijuana industry beginning to flower, the commercial cannabis industry is pushing hard to dispel the idea that everyone who tokes these days is a stumbling slacker living on their parents' couch. You just think of it as being a dark alley, either really low-life scummy people or just, you know, brain-dead teens or something. But with marijuana now legal in some form in 30 states across the country, the industry is fighting to change those perceptions. Los Angeles-based cannabis company MedMen recently launched Forget Stoner, a multi-million dollar advertising campaign. I think there's a huge untapped uh, customer base. Uh, we're trying to you know, elevate that conversation to, 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 to make it okay for us to talk about cannabis. The company has plastered ads throughout LA to showcase ordinary and successful people who use cannabis. We're seeing more marketers and advertisers who are starting to show this consumer more respect. They're starting to show this consumer more recognition of who they are in reality versus what that stereotype has been. But not everyone wants to see the recreational use of cannabis normalized. Some worry that improving pot's image ignores its potential for harm. Studies have found that smoking pot may be linked to higher chances of traffic accidents, chronic bronchitis from long-term use, and schizophrenia. 
especially in the most frequent users. The marijuana industry is not about Cheech and Chong anymore. It's not about Woodstock. It's about Wall Street and Silicon Valley. What the pot industry is doing now, it's exactly what Big Tobacco did 80 years ago. They're taking doctors, respected people in the community, um, business people, and they're saying that, look, we all use marijuana. You should too. Cannabis advocates say increased legalization has created more acceptance toward marijuana among the general public. People like Cindy Paul, the 55-year-old insurance client manager, says she hasn't smoked pot in 25 years, but recently decided to try marijuana-infused gummies. I do think it has medical qualities. Um, I'm not using it for that. I'm using it to have a good time. I don't think it's any different than having a beer. So since we came to Oregon and it's legal here, that's why we're doing it here. The industry hoping it can shake the stoner stereotype once and for all.